Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Caitlin from GreatFlorals.com and today we have a card making video. I kind of want to do a process of how I come up with my card designs um, and my sort of process for start to finish from a card. So I wanted to start by showing you guys a couple of things that I do. Let me move that out of the way. First off, uh, I'll tell you about the things I'll be working with. I have a 110 pound card stock. Um, this is just from Joann's. And then I have 80 pound Nina Solar Crest White cardstock, um, which is a higher brand of cardstock. It's very smooth. Um, and this is, uh, I already have these pre cut, and they're four and a quarter by five and a half, which is the usual card size that I'm working with. And then I actually have two iris cases. Um, one is backgrounds for cards, so like little bits that I've painted or inked. Um, and the other one is images that I've stamped and colored. Um, so if I open this one, this is different backgrounds that I've created. So I have some galaxies and then some ink blended, some embossed. These are just for quick cards that I need a little something for. So that's that. That's what I keep in there. I'm not going to be using one of those today. Um, and then I also have where I've stamped. So these ones are already stamped out. They just need to be cut. Um, extra die cut pieces. So if I ran something through my cuddle bug, it'll be in here. And then also my colored images. Um, will be in here. Not organized in any sort of way. I'm hoping that this doesn't get too full so I kind of keep with my card making while I'm coloring because I love coloring so much. So I can see where coloring would get out of hand compared to card making. So I'm actually going to be making a get well card today. Um, I don't really have a plan in mind. I just know that I already have those images colored and I have done a color along with me before. So if you guys want me to, I'll have that link down below in case you want to watch it. If you guys would like more Color With Me videos, let me know. I could always film some with my new camera setup. Hopefully it'll look nice. Um, but yeah, let's get started. So I already have some images in here that I want to pull out. Um, it's a lawn fawn set. So it's a little bird. Um, a little nurse bird, I should say. Um, there's another band-aid. Oh, here it is. Some band-aids and a little prescription bottle. So that's basically all I need out of here. So I'm going to set that aside back into my card making caddy. And I also don't plan on doing any die cutting or anything today. Probably just a little bit of background color to create a simple card. So for the 110 pound card stock, that's what I traditionally make my card bases out of. I usually do have some of these pre-cut, but I'm just currently out. Um, and I usually don't cut them with my little trimmer here. I usually use my rotary blade trimmer, which is an industrial size, not industrial size, but it's an industrial quality blade uh, to be used in like an office space. So let's see, I'm going to be doing a portrait style card. So it's going to open this way, if that makes sense. Um, so I'm going to cut my paper on the short side in half. So half of eight is four and a quarter, which is what this card is measured to as well. And then we're going to score the card once we have it cut. So now I have two card bases ready to go, which is really convenient. So I'm just going to score it at five and a half using a bone folder. Make sure it's lined up. I'm going to do that with both of them just so I have a second one ready to go when I need another card base. And just having them pre-ready really makes it easier for you to want to make cards because I find that the cutting process is very tedious, but when I do want to do it, it's easy to get it going once I have it started, especially with my larger trimmer. Um, makes cutting very easy. And of course, if your cards don't turn out perfect, it's okay. Some of mine are not perfect. It's very hard to measure the score line sometimes because I don't have a scoreboard. Um, but if you do have a scoreboard, that'd make it easier to score your cards sometimes. So now I have two card bases. I'm going to set one again in my card caddy so it's there when I need it next. And so this Nina Solar Crest White cardstock is cut to the same size as the front of the card, or supposedly the same size. Again, not everything has to be perfect in my world as long as it works. So I had these um, doodle bug stickers pulled out and I don't know if you'll be able to read them um, because it's white on white, but it says thinking of you. And I really wanted to use some of these because they're in my kit for this month and I figured I could use them on some cards. So what I'm thinking is I'll have these two maybe stacked like this. We're going to go for a clean and simple look today. I forgot to mention that. Um, just an easy card to make uh, something like... These will be there. And I will have a gift card going in the middle or inside the card, so I don't want a lot of dimension on the front of the card, if that makes sense too. And then the thinking of you sentiment could go right there. So what I think we're gonna do is do some ink blending. Now I'm going to pull out my Tim Holtz craft mat for that, because we don't want to make our work service inky. So I'm gonna move all this stuff out of the way. And then 
I don't know what color ink I want yet, but let me grab an ink blending tool. Here we go. I'm thinking just one color to add some. Or, you know, we could do some another technique instead. We'll actually do another technique instead to try it out. So, like I said, I don't know what color I want. I have this blue on the prescription bottle, and then I have the yellow of the little bird. And, of course, I don't really want to use brown as a band-aid color. So let me pull these over so we have them. So what I think I'm going to do is pull a Distress ink. I think orange would go nicely with both of these little images. So let me pull out one of my oranges. Let's do Carved Pumpkin. Uh, when I'm making this, it is October. I'm not sure when the um, video will be going up. But so I'm going to use Carved Pumpkin, which I think will look nice. Um, and if not, we can always try again. And then out of my tool caddy here, I have a little spray bottle always filled with water. And Distress inks are very nice with water. They play very nice. So... I'm just going to ink that up, and then what I'm going to do is press it in um, not too hard and not too softly. And I'm actually going to grab, before I do that, I'm going to grab a little baby wipe so I have it in case there's extra that I need to blot off. So having a baby wipe handy is nice. I think I'm actually going to wipe up some of the extra water because I don't want to make my um, card front too wet. Otherwise, it will take forever to dry. Okay, so now that I have some of that pulled off, I'm going to just press this in. And pull it up and it's just a nice little blob and I'm going to try to move the color around a little bit so I can get a different shape here and what's good about using a larger piece of cardstock like this compared to if I were to use um, one that was already cut down to size I can now cut this down where I actually want it to be um, showing that extra color and again Nina cardstock is not supposed to um, get too wet it's not made for being wet, but it will still turn out nice. Okay, so now I have a lot of texture there with different shades that show up, and I'm just going to wipe off my mat here. And then we'll have to let this dry, which shouldn't take too long, especially if I blot it. You can kind of see that the pigment didn't move a lot because I didn't pick it up with a paintbrush or anything over here, but I kind of like that look. And again, that's because of the way the Nina reacts with water. If you were to use a Strathmore um, or a watercolor paper, I think it's Strathmore, I can't remember it off the top of my head, but I do have a Strathmore brand that does well with water. Maybe it's called Bristol, Strathmore Bristol. That might be it. And if you're newer to card making and you don't have these sort of supplies, um, I will be doing a series on this channel as a collab with uh, Sarah Scraps uh, about doing card making with scrapbooking supplies. So if you're a wannabe card maker, but you're definitely not in that field for Product wise, we're definitely going to be sharing some more easier um, techniques if you don't have these sort of products. So now while I'm waiting for this to dry, because if I were to cut the paper now, it would just tear, um, which is not something we want, especially if I cut in the um, wet zone here. What I'm thinking is kind of cutting a square out of this. And again, since my sentiment's white, it's going to have to go where um, the color is. So I think maybe if I just trim it down like this, um, sorry, I'm not centered, but um, if I were to trim it down the middle, We'll make it more centered and then put it in the middle of the card. I think it'll give a nice look. And as for my images, these were colored with Z Clean Color Markers. Again, I have a video about how I color with them on my channel already. So if you want to check that out, feel free. I'll have it linked down below again. Something is something like that. Those two little guys up there. And again, imagine this is centered, the little blob. And then if I were to take this sticker out, I think this will take a little finessing. Um, I haven't worked with a, a Doodlebug sticker in a while, this thin at least. Um, I love their icon stickers for scrapbooking though. Yeah, these little bits are going to be annoying to get out, but that's okay. We'll try it anyway. These kind of um, cardstock stickers are perfect for um, making a lot of the same cards. I know they make them for like thank yous and like you're invited. So if you're doing invitations for a party and you didn't have a stamp, this might be a good way to do um, a lot of invitations. But again, depends on how you like working with stickers because now we have a lot of little bits to peel out of here. Just gotta do the K. There we go. So just to kind of see what this would look like. It's definitely legible on top of the orange, so what I'm gonna do is stick that right there for a little bit. What's gonna be really hard is trying to get the eye dots um, to stick somewhere, or to get them off the um, backing, if anything. So let me get out these little guys while we're waiting for that to dry. And of course, if you have like multiple sets of stickers like this, or you have die cuts that say the same thing or something, 
Um, you can definitely do a bunch of backgrounds at once so you don't have to wipe up the ink off your pad or your craft mat just to save yourself some time and energy. If you have any other thing, thinking of you card, then you'll kind of be mad that you didn't make a second one. Um, I'm kind of mad I didn't make a second one now that I think about it. And I'm taking these little bits out from between each of the letters. Although this is very cute, this is very tedious to me. Um, I know some people find something like this sort of relaxing, but um, me, not so much. Let's see. I can peel this one off. I'm also terrified of ripping a sticker like this because I have a nice thinking end of, and if I were to rip the word you, kind of, I'm going to have to find a replacement of some sort. Um, and it just wouldn't look as nice if I just had the original. Okay. So now I have both, all three of those ready. Let's check on our card here. Still quite a bit wet, but what I'm going to do is start trimming the edge that doesn't have any color on it so I know it won't tear because it's just cardstock and recycling as we go. So again, you can kind of see the pilling in the paper. That's just because I'm working with paper that doesn't take water very well, and I did add quite a bit of water. Um, so it really depends on your supplies, and definitely test them before you're in a hurry to make a card someday. Need something just like that. And again, this one's a little bit off from four and a quarter. So let me trim this down. Let me double check though. Check both sides to make sure one fits. Yeah, it's a little bit off. So I'm going to trim off the top here. We want it to be four and a quarter. Or I mean by five and a half. Sorry, I forgot I was making a portrait card. Yeah, it was just a hairline off. Um, which again, you might want to cut after you've done with the card. It really depends on your process. So now I have the... Um, now it looks crooked. Oh, it's just because of the paper warping. Because of the middle of the card being wet, or the card, the base being wet, um, it will warp sometimes. So I'm kind of thinking I want to pop a color on the edge here. So what I'm going to do is look at my washi tape, because I think I have an orange one right here. And again, I'm just kind of winging it for my card design, as you can tell. Um, I've watched a lot of card videos, so I definitely have a lot of ideas in my head. Execution is just usually the problem. So I'm going to do is lay this washi tape down right near the edge. And I'm going to place this on top to kind of see if that's what I like. Because I want this to be centered. But still have a little strip of washi showing. So then I'm going to take my scissors because I want it to meet right at the top. I'm just going to trim that. And I'm going to close the card. Oops. Trim the bottom. And then fold it so you can see where the top is and trim the top and be careful not to cut your card because that would not be a good idea okay now that we have one side done actually I've seen this in a couple of videos maybe I'll try an offset card which usually doesn't sit well with my <laughs> inner um, centerist feelings but maybe I could do something like this where the washi tape is just peeking out on the one side which I kind of like because then you can see the arrows better and this is supposed to be a more uh, thinking of you, but a more of a masculine card, um, since it is for a dude. Um, still waiting for this to dry. You could use a heat tool, but I'm kind of impatient like that where I wouldn't use a heat tool. Um, and again, I'm having issues with this being crooked, which makes me think that one of the other sides of this is crooked. So another thing is if you've come into this problem where no matter how you line this up it looks like it's going to be crooked, you can just trim the edge of the card later. Once everything's put together, trim both edges and then you know it'll be straight. Um, all together at least. Maybe not a square straight, but I'm going to glue this down. Um, it may get some more warping after, but this will be sitting in the mail for a little while, so I'm hoping it kind of flattens out then. And I just ran out of tape in my adhesive this video is going great. <laughs> um, I'm just going to pull my ATG gun instead. Let me try to peel that one back in so it doesn't get on the front. I do not recommend liquid adhesive on the front of the card unless you can put a very small amount because it will warp the card just like this water did. Um, so liquid adhesive is something I advise against, but I'm not totally against, so I'm just trying to figure out which way I want it. Do I want this dark splotch to the left? I think I want it this way. So again, I'm going to line it up with my corner here. 
Actually, I'm going to do the top corner because I can always trim the bottom corner, right? Much harder to trim the top corner when you're all done. Okay, so we're doing this offset sort of card with a nice border over here. And you can already tell that the warping's coming through. I didn't put liquid or any adhesive there. Again, I'll have this in the mail for a while. Um, so hopefully it evens out. And now we know these will be here. And then this will be... I'm going to push this up actually. Just to get some artificial lining up. Now that we're working with the inside of the car, I'm just going to zoom in so you guys can see it a little bit better, hopefully. I think I want the of you on the same line like it was on the card or the sticker base. So since this is off center, I want the sticker to be centered on this panel only, the front panel that we just attached, not the whole card, if that makes sense. Um, that way it doesn't um, look a little funky. So I'm going to grab a T-square ruler just because it looks really off to me and I'm just trying to make it look better. Okay. So this piece is a little over three and a quarter, so we need to move these items over just a tiny hair bit. And like I mentioned before, I'm not going for a dimension on this card because I do plan on putting a gift card inside. Then I want it to go through the mail smoothly. Now another problem is i got to make sure the sentiment's actually straight once I glue it on. So let's see. That's too far over. Whoops. This is why I usually don't work with letter stickers, but I figured this would be a good opportunity to inspire you guys to use the ones you might have in your stash. Okay, so that's kind of temporary glue down for now. And I'm going to put this right over top of it. I just made that one crooked. Luckily it's a script font, so something like that's kind of loosely up to interpretation. Didn't mean to drop those. I'm just trying to look at it straight on now. You can kind of tell that these two are very close together. So we're going to kind of swing that up like so. I think this of's what's really throwing everything off because I want to put it at the same level as the U, but it shouldn't be because it's a taller letter. Does that make sense? This is becoming very tedious and much more than I anticipated. We're going to have to cover that up. It's another uh, con of working with somewhat wet paper is that it will rip much more easily. Okay, I stuck it down no matter what, it looks fine. It'll be fine. So now we have our sentiment on and I just noticed we still have to add these little eye pieces which is going to need definitely a tweezer um, help here. And I know you guys definitely want more card videos, but I really want to know what kind of card videos you guys like to see because there's so many different types. There's these ones, live talking, um, which I used to do card making live streams, which was interesting for sure. Um, and I'm not opposed to doing those again, like things like this, live card making. It's just... It makes me feel like, um, I don't know, it just doesn't feel like I'm doing my best work or something. Like this card's going to be fine. It's going to look great, I think. I mean, we'll see once it's all together, but if I can get this other eye dot out. Okay, there we go. Um, it just feels weird to be making cards on camera because that's not something I often do, even though it's something I really want to do because I like making cards a lot. And you can kind of see maybe here on the video that this doesn't really line up on the edge. But again, I can just chop that whole thing off with my um, industrial size trimmer. I wanted these stacked to give it a sort of elongated feel because this is a card that opens this way. 
Um, and I might put the band-aids on the inside because it kind of feels like a lot on the outside. Does that make sense? Like it's overwhelming. But like these could be on the inside near the signature or near the second sentiment. So it says thinking of you. And then again, I don't want to use more liquid adhesive on the outside. So I'm going to use tape runner and a lot of it because these little guys, I think these are when I did them on watercolor paper. So they're very thick pieces. Um, and you can tell the orange really worked out pretty well. That does not look centered. It's too late. It's centered on the colored blob, which is good. So that's fine. And then the little chick here, you can kind of tell she's a nurse. And again, most people who receive, I don't think I said this before, but most people who receive cards are just wowed by the fact that you made a card. So if you're just starting card making and you're nervous about what someone might think of your card, it's okay. We all get nervous. Um, but don't worry, people are going to love what you make. So I'm thinking like another sentiment here that says get well soon. So let me go grab that. Actually, I think I know where one is if I can remember. Um, but I'm thinking get well soon and then two little band-aids up there. But I feel like the front does need something else. I'm thinking some enamel dots perhaps. So let me go grab that stuff and I'll be right back. Okay, so I found that sentiment I was talking about. It just says get well soon. And it's from TPC Studios. And there's also a thinking of you and a bunch of other ones in here. So I'm just going to grab that out. And it doesn't feel very sticky, so we'll see how this goes. I probably should use my stamping platform. And again, I think it'll fit fine within the card. So my stamping platform is one of the um, contraband versions. As you guys know, um, these ones are no longer available, but there are some other options on the market, of course. So I'm going to open this. Again, make sure you stamp the inside of your card before you decorate the outside, because if you were to put dimensional pieces, it might be very hard to stamp on the inside. So I don't think this is going to stick it. Okay, it sticks a little bit, so that's good news. So I'm just going to kind of line it up. I'm just going to use black ink. Um, and I'll have room for my band-aids just fine. And again, sorry I'm a little bit off camera. Still getting used to this card making thing. Let me grab my ink here. Nice versifying onyx black. Oh, you guys, you know what? This is a rubber stamp. i got to take out the foam insert so it stamps fine. Again, guys, still new to this um, card making thing on camera. It's very weird to make cards on camera when you've not done it in so long. Okay, so it's just going to say get well soon. That's 100% not centered on the card. That's why there's a grid on these things to kind of be able to do that, but it doesn't really work out well for me, does it? See, that's also not centered. Or straight, I should say. It's not centered, it's just not straight. Again, sorry, I haven't zoomed in. Okay, well now that's even more crooked. Didn't I just line it up with this grid line? Guys, this is not going well. Okay. I swear that... Okay, so it looks like the foam's cut differently than the sentiment is. Does that make sense? Like the foam was cut at a different angle. So we're just guesstimating what it's going to look like. I'm very scared to stamp this. Okay, if it's crooked then we'll add the band-aids on crooked so it makes sense okay so I'm just gonna ink this up I should probably just zoom out that'd probably be a smarter idea there we go sorry about the messy desk too it's easier to make a messy desk when you're zoomed in so you guys can't see the messiness so just adding a couple blobs of that pressing it down again don't think it'll be straight but it's not straight that's okay like I said we'll just fix it with more pizzazz <laughs> I'm going to take this out, put my magnets over there, put this back in. Closing that for now, it's fine. I'll just take it out later. Okay, so now let me put these magnets back in before I forget where they are. Okay, so we have two band-aids that are going to go on the inside. Maybe just something crooked like this so they make more sense. Like I said, thought that counts. Because it's at such a slight angle that will somebody actually notice? I don't know. I could just put them like this. Or something cute up here so they're kind of like... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that. Again, these are on watercolor paper, so I'm going to try to put down a lot of adhesive. If it's not fighting me for it. I don't remember how I just had them, so I'm just going to kind of wing it and just place one like that. 
Then again, this is a Lawn Fawn stamp set, and if I can find the materials that I've used in this video, I'll have them linked down below. Cute. And having extra images colored that kind of coordinate, you might want to use them on the inside just so they're not sitting around in your stash waiting to be used sort of thing. Because I know I have some that kind of only go with one sort of stamp set, and if you don't put them in now, they won't really match later, so... Just keep that in mind as well. And then the finishing touches, I pulled out my enamel dots here in an effort to find something that fits. And these little yellow rhinestones, yellow and orange rhinestones are gonna be perfect. Like I said, this is a masculine card, but don't be afraid to add bling. Everybody loves bling a little bit. So just some yellow and orange ones to add a little more pizzazz. And I never use little rhinestones, so this is a perfect way to do so. So our clean and simple card took way too long. Maybe in my book, maybe in your book, but it is done. It is complete. It is finished. So I just as thinking of you on the outside. We used washi tape. We used distress ink. We colored these, but not in this episode. We used stickers. We used rhinestones. There's just so much going on. And we'll get well soon on the inside. Okay, there it goes. And again, I have room for a gift card up here or down here. It's just in a little envelope, so it's probably just going to go like this. Or I could attach it up here with washi tape. Um, and then this is all set to go. But that's it for today's card making video. Let me know what you guys think. Am I terrible at card making on camera or is it okay? Um, I think this might have been only like a 30 minute card maybe. I don't really remember. I stopped the camera a few times to um, get some things when I was mid card making. But Again, I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up and please let me know in the comments what you think. Should we continue card making? Should we not? Let me know. But thank you guys again so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!